waiting for this day for a long time. I'm finally installing this amazing refinish center console into the car now that it's ready. That looks awesome. Here's a preview of the finished product with floor mats, console, and new shift knob, dash, everything. This project is going to involve taking the bottom portion of this door panel because it doesn't have any rips in it and transplanting that to the donor door panel, which has some damage. So let's see how that goes. Got it all swapped out. I received some uh, replacement window molding pieces from a friend in Florida. Thank you, Alan, for this stuff. I'm gonna uh, maybe reshoot some of it with a quick coat of semi-gloss paint, but otherwise uh, it should be stuff that I could just provide to my installer and see if they can figure it out. One of the items I got, what, wow, this is dusty already. I have new window run channels, so installing some new clips here to receive it, and then I'll stick that in here. Set. Quick lap in the uh, 95 LS with Chris here. The last time he saw this car, it was a uh, jalopy in the backyard. It's still a bit of a jalopy, but we're about 90% there with the resto effort. So uh, nice to finally be able to start putting some miles on this thing. in the Sherwood Green Coupe LS. It's about time, a year and a half later. In much better condition than before. It's not new, 100%, but it, it's getting there. New carpet, new dash, new console, new leather. Yeah. It's like a whole new car. My next interior update is this original wheel has some like bite marks and nail marks, so we're going to put a fresh replacement in there. So there's a before, you can see there's was peeling away and kind of gross looking. This one's really nice, all original. A little on the shiny side, probably needs some like cleaning, but looks good. I just had an idea on correcting this piece of missing black, I could either mask it and paint it like a Plasti Dip or a satin paint, or I can try and just put a little piece of black electrical tape to cover it for now. Check that out. Far from perfect, but it's way better than having the faded splotchiness. No project is without its challenges. So I have a coolant leak that's manifest. Can you see the steam coming out of the underhood area here? But pretty steady coolant drip that surfaced from the passenger side front and dropping this off now for uh, evaluation. Probably a good idea anyways to have the mechanic go over this because it's been driven about 500 miles since the complete overhaul uh, last year. In addition to that, I'm gonna see if I can get these fog lamps installed. I have a complete set here, pretty much ready to go uh, with the refinished bezels, the switch, the harness, everything that should be needed. And um, if they want to do it, great. If not, I'll uh, handle that later. It's really not a priority, more just a cosmetic thing. But they're uh, little round, you know, OEM fogs on the 94, 95 coupe that have a cutout here and should be a nice update to the front end for this car. So in the next chapter of Legend Resto, I was on a mission to recreate this picture or at least find out if anybody knew the story behind it. You see a Golden Glow Legend sedan here in front and a couple other cars on the elevated platforms. But that is this building. Sorry for the traffic noise. 
That is this building in the early 90s, and I went in there just now to ask them if they know anything about period photographs or history, and I basically was given a complete no chance to answer. So anyway, the, the quest continues. I have some period correct photographs and images of this place from 20 or 30 years ago, but not much to go off of. That's one of my favorite ads from the same location at 1234 West Bell Road. Now, Turf Paradise that they mentioned there actually refers to a racetrack that's across the street and a horse racetrack, and it's been in operation for a long time. Unfortunately, this car saw some overnight rain. It looks like a mess, but I do have fog lights for now. We're missing one harness that I'm gonna have to try and source uh, to get these to actually work, but they're what we call dummy fog lights for right now and we'll uh, cross that bridge a little bit later. Cleaned up again and ready for the next and maybe final phase, which is molding installation on Wednesday of next week. So we decided to reuse the windshield moldings that were on the car prior, just with some additional adhesive and um, fine touches. So. I went ahead and refinished them with a coat of Plasti Dip or a couple coats just to kind of clean them up a bit. And we'll see how the install goes later this week. Here's where the detail-oriented nature of this Resto gets really out of control. These are little brackets that go behind the license plate. All you end up being able to see is the little teeny bottom flange there. But these got painted green when the car was restored and they're supposed to be black. So I'm repainting them black and reinstalling them underneath the license plate where nobody else will care but me. That's okay. These things right here. Much better. I also reinstalled new hardware for the license plate itself because these had been painted over and they're supposed to be silver. So there you go. It is time to drop the legend for installation. We're gonna do this new cowl right here because this existing one is kind of chipped right there. And then uh, it's got a missing piece of paint or, uh, here that I've touched up. So that'll be it, get replaced as well as the top and the sides. And then we'll do a new reinstall of the molding here on the back window as well. So looking good. This is one of the final uh, pieces of this restoration that need to come together. Here's my next installment of Tyson's Arts and Crafts. This is a 3x6 sticker that goes on top of the Gen 2 Legend airbox in the engine bay. They're notorious for peeling off, especially if you ever hit it with like a high pressure wash or anything. So this one lost entirely um, all its stickiness on the back, so I was thinking of ways to replicate it and I went this morning to Alpha Graphics who printed it on a, or copied it, on a sheet of vinyl. So I actually had a few copies made up because I know that one or two of my other cars will need the same thing. So this needs to just be trimmed out and then it's ready to apply. Picking this car up from JJ, Triple J, and these guys did the moldings and it looks phenomenal. Front and rear win window moldings. And uh, we also had them do a quick uh, cleanup of some overspray that was on here from I don't know what, but there was a little bit of overspray, especially on this driver's side, and the car looks awesome. Home with the car now, and I still just can't believe the transformation. Time to complete the 95 LS with a sticker for the airbox so I'm just taking note of the position that it's located in on the 94 LS so I can kind of mirror that when I add this over there. Perfect. These moldings turned out really awesome for being universal. Good quality fit and finish. Uh, what was weird is the glass, the back glass actually was 
shifted to one side before. I don't know if it, the window had been taken out once before, but it had a bigger gap on one side. And now everything is symmetrical all the way around. The front was a reuse of some existing moldings uh, that I got from a friend that were in better shape than the ones that came off the car. So very happy with how that turned out as well because it retains the OEM look all the way around, including this new cowl down here that has no issues with paint missing over there.